Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I wanted to look at a little bit higher complexity with these proportion problems. So let's take a look. It says solve the equation for P. So we've been asked to solve for P. Um, one way to think about solving is to isolate the variable. In other words, just get the letter alone. You're trying to get that letter standing alone so you can find out what he's equal to. Um, and so you can see right now that this is a pretty complex problem, but what I hope you notice is that it is a proportion problem. What do I mean by that? Well, what we have here is equivalent ratios, equal fractions. See what I mean? There's a big ugly fraction here, and we see that being equal to a fraction on this side. Fraction equals fractions. That's how you can tell that you're looking at a proportion problem. And the great news is there is a really nice trick with proportion problems to get rid of your fractions. And what we learned in the last video is that cross products are equivalent. <laughs> Basically, if it's a, a proportion problem, sorry, if it's a proportion problem, you can cross multiply. Cross products are equivalent. So that's what I'll do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the denominator of this fraction by the numerator of the other fraction. I'm multiplying across. Uh, now, remember that multiplication passes out. So if you're multiplying 15 uh, times p minus 4, I'm going to use a uh, parentheses to tell myself to take that 15 and pass it out or multiply it to the entire p minus 4. And I'm just going to write it down for now. I'll multiply it in the next step. Now on the right hand side of the equal sign, we said cross products are equivalent. So I'm going to give myself an equal sign and I'm going to find the other cross product, 3 times 4. Since that math is super easy to do, 3 times 4, I'll just do it in my head. That's a 12. But I am going to take an extra step to now do the multiplication on the left-hand side. I want 15 times all this jazz, so I'm going to distribute or pass out the 15. So 15 times p is, of course, 15p. And if I subtracted 4 15 times, that would be like I subtracted 60 or 4 times 15. And of course that left hand side is just going to be equal to this right hand side. There's no simplifying to do on the right hand side, so I just leave it be. And now it's time to start solving, working to get the letter alone. Um, this letter P has a couple of numbers on its side of the equal sign. There's a 15 and there's a 60. Those are the two numbers I'm going to have to get rid of. Remember that when you're solving, you actually work the order of operations backwards. So you should move anything that's adding or subtracting first. So I'm going to move away that minus 60 by doing the opposite. The opposite of subtracting 60 is adding 60. That's what I'll do to both sides. Again, remember that I'm doing it to both sides so that my left and my right hand side stay equivalent or balanced. As long as I make the same change on both sides, I should have an equivalent equation. And so, after I add 60 to both sides, on the left hand side, subtracting 60 and adding 60 cancel, so I'm left with my 15p. And on the right hand side, 12 plus 60 gave me 72. And now I am almost done almost done, but I do need to divide, sorry, checking my work because I feel like 72 is a wrong answer. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so I do need to solve for P, get P alone. So this 15 is a multiplier, and so I'll do the opposite of multiply. I will divide both sides by 15. And maybe you're feeling the panic that overtook me just a second ago. You're realizing that 72 won't divide perfectly by 15. Uh, 15 won't go perfectly into 72. Um, in fact, if I tried to type this into my TI, I'd probably get a decimal answer. Let's give it a try. Yes, I'd get 4.8. Now that's a perfectly legitimate answer, don't get me wrong, but more often in pure algebra we leave fractions around than having decimals, so it could also be uh, the answer given in reduced fraction form. In order to make sure your fraction is reduced in your TI, you would type 72 and then the N over D button. That's the fraction button. So 72, N over D, and then the bottom of 15. 
and press enter and it would reduce that fraction for you and tell you that the reduced fraction is 24 over 5. Okay, so either one of these answers are completely acceptable. 44.8 or 24.5 are both legit answers. And you might say, well, which one would it be on the GED? Could be either. So don't be uncomfortable giving your answers in either form. Uh, what they wouldn't make you do is give you both those answers and make you choose between them. Um, either there would only be one of those as an option or both would be correct, either would be correct. Okay, great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.